Very short stature. Very short stature, which is under 5 feet 2 inches for women or 5 feet 6 inches for men, affects approximately 5% of adults in developed countries with higher frequencies in regions historically affected by nutritional stress and in populations adapted to tropical climates, including parts of Southeast Asia, Central Africa, and indigenous groups in South America and Oceania. This height range represents the lower extreme of human variation, where body size is minimized either through evolutionary adaptation to hot climates or through developmental responses to environmental constraints. What makes this remarkable is the ability to lose heat. Smaller bodies have a higher surface area to volume ratio, meaning more skin surface relative to body mass, allowing heat to escape quickly in hot, humid environments where cooling is critical for survival. For ancestral populations in equatorial regions, including African pygmy groups, Southeast Asian populations, and tropical forest dwellers, very short stature provided life-saving thermal regulation advantages. When environmental temperatures approach body temperature, the only way to cool down is through sweat evaporation from the skin surface, and having maximum skin surface relative to body mass meant better cooling capacity, preventing dangerous overheating that could cause organ failure and death. The compact body size also required fewer calories to maintain, a critical advantage in environments where food availability fluctuated seasonally or where dense forests made hunting and gathering more challenging. From an evolutionary perspective, populations in tropical regions where heat stress was constant and food resources were unpredictable developed shorter stature as an adaptation, with the pygmy populations of Central Africa and Southeast Asia representing some of the clearest examples of this environmental adaptation, maintaining average heights below 5 feet despite adequate nutrition. However, very short stature creates vulnerabilities in modern contexts and colder climates. Individuals under 5 feet 2 inches have approximately 50% higher risk of cardiovascular disease compared to those over 5 feet 7 inches, possibly linked to smaller coronary arteries that are more prone to blockage, though this relationship is complex and may reflect developmental factors rather than height itself. Shorter individuals also face higher risk of type 2 diabetes, with studies showing inverse relationships between leg length and diabetes risk, possibly because shorter leg bones signal developmental stress or altered metabolism. In social contexts, very short adults may face discrimination in employment and romantic contexts, earning less on average and encountering biases that equate height with competence and leadership, creating real-world disadvantages despite biological advantages. Still, in ancestral tropical environments where daily temperatures exceeded 90 degrees Fahrenheit with high humidity, where cooling the body was life or death, and where conserving calories meant surviving lean seasons, very short stature provided optimized adaptation. The populations that evolved this trait thrived in some of Earth's most challenging climates, demonstrating that smaller size, far from being a disadvantage, represented precision adaptation to specific environmental pressures that larger bodies could not handle as efficiently. Short stature Short stature, ranging from 5 feet 2 to 5 feet 4 inches for women and 5 feet 6 to 5 feet 8 inches for men, affects approximately 20% of adults in developed populations, with higher frequencies in East Asia, Southeast Asia, Mediterranean regions, and parts of Latin America. This height range sits just below average for most populations, but remains within normal variation, representing a body size that balances heat dissipation with heat retention depending on environmental context. What makes this pattern distinctive is reduced resource requirements combined with efficient thermal regulation. Bodies in this range need fewer calories per day to maintain basic metabolism, approximately 200 to 400 fewer calories compared to tall individuals, while still maintaining adequate heat production for temperate climates and moderate heat dissipation for warmer regions. For ancestral populations in regions with moderate climates, seasonal food availability, or resource constraints, short stature provided practical advantages. Lower caloric needs meant survival during winter months when food was scarce, during droughts when crops failed, or in mountainous regions where agriculture was limited. The reduced body mass also meant less stress on joints during a lifetime of physical labor, lower risk of injury from falls due to lower center of gravity, and reduced skeletal stress that translates to lower rates of back pain and joint problems in later life. Populations in Japan, Southern Europe, and highland regions of Asia developed average heights in this range, adapting to environments where moderate stature balanced all competing demands without extreme specialization. From an evolutionary perspective, short stature represents a conservative strategy that works across varied environments. It provides enough size for adequate strength and organ function while avoiding the costs of large body mass, creating a phenotype that thrives in diverse climates from Mediterranean summers to temperate winters, making it one of the most geographically widespread height adaptations in human populations. However, short stature carries trade-offs in specific contexts. 
Individuals in this range have approximately 20 to 30 percent higher risk of cardiovascular disease compared to taller individuals, though significantly lower risk than very short individuals, suggesting a gradual relationship between height and heart health. The mechanisms remain debated, possibly involving smaller blood vessels, developmental nutrition, or metabolic factors, but the pattern is consistent across populations. Short individuals also have modestly higher risks of stroke and blood clots, though substantially lower than average or tall individuals, and face similar social biases as very short people, though to lesser degree. Below average height. Below average height ranging from 5 feet 4 to 5 feet 6 inches for women and 5 feet 8 to 5 feet 10 inches for men affects approximately 25% of adults in developed populations, sitting just below the median in most Western countries while representing average or above average stature in many Asian and Latin American populations. This height range occupies the transition zone between shorter and average heights, maintaining many metabolic and structural efficiencies of shorter stature while approaching the sizes more typical in temperate and northern climates. What makes this height advantageous is the sweet spot for longevity and disease resistance. Multiple studies show that individuals in this range have among the lowest all-cause mortality rates, combining the cancer protection and lower cardiovascular risks of shorter stature with adequate body size for strength and organ function. For ancestral populations in temperate regions, below average height provided optimal balance between competing demands. Bodies in this range maintained efficient caloric use, requiring only moderate food intake to sustain function while producing enough metabolic heat for cool climates without the extreme demands of very large bodies. The moderate size reduced cancer risk because fewer cells mean fewer opportunities for cancer-causing mutations, a mathematical relationship that holds across all body sizes, while the adequate blood vessel diameter protected against heart disease better than very short individuals. Populations in temperate Europe, East Asia, and parts of the Americas developed average heights in this range, reflecting adaptation to moderate climates where neither extreme heat nor extreme cold dominated year-round. From an evolutionary perspective, below average height represents refined adaptation to stable, temperate environments. It avoids both the extreme heat dissipation of very short stature and the extreme heat conservation of tall stature, creating a phenotype optimized for moderate climates that covered vast portions of human habitable range, from Mediterranean coasts to the plains of East Asia, making it perhaps the most evolutionarily stable height configuration. However, individuals in this range face cardiovascular risks intermediate between shorter and taller people, with modest elevation in heart disease risk compared to tall individuals but substantially lower risk than very short people, suggesting height's effects on circulation follow a gradual pattern. Average height Average height ranging from 5 feet 6 to 5 feet 8 inches for women and 5 feet 10 inches to 6 feet for men affects approximately 25% of adults in developed populations, representing the statistical median in most Western countries and Northern Europe. This height range occupies the center of human height distribution, representing the most common body size in populations with adequate childhood nutrition and modern health care. What makes this remarkable is balanced adaptation across all factors. Average height individuals face moderate risks and moderate benefits across virtually all health outcomes, representing the evolutionary middle ground where no single environmental pressure dominates strongly enough to push height dramatically higher or lower. For modern populations in developed countries with stable climates, reliable nutrition, and modern medicine, average height represents the default outcome when developmental stress is minimized and genetic potential is expressed normally. Bodies in this range balance heat generation and heat loss adequately for most climates encountered in daily life, require moderate caloric intake that matches typical modern diets, and maintain strength adequate for modern physical demands without the excessive joint stress of larger bodies. The moderate number of cells provides adequate organ function and healing capacity while keeping cancer risk at intermediate levels. Average height emerged as common in populations with temperate climates, reliable agriculture, and social structures that protected children from severe nutritional stress, allowing genetic height potential to express fully. However, average height individuals face moderate risks across multiple health domains. Cancer risk is higher than in short individuals due to greater cell numbers, with approximately 10 to 15 percent elevation in overall cancer incidence compared to short stature. Cardiovascular disease risk is lower than short individuals, yet higher than taller individuals, reflecting the complex relationship between height and heart health. Average height also provides no particular advantage or disadvantage in modern social contexts where height biases exist, representing neutral ground in height-based social hierarchies. Above average height Above average height ranging from 5 feet 8 to 5 feet 10 inches for women and 6 feet to 6 feet 2 inches for men affects approximately 20% of adults in developed populations, occurring most commonly in Northern Europe, particularly Netherlands, Scandinavia, and Baltic regions, where average male heights reach 6 feet or higher. 
This height range sits above the median but below extremes, representing enhanced size without the costs of very tall stature. What makes this pattern valuable is optimized cardiovascular efficiency with maintained manageable size. Above average height individuals have larger diameter blood vessels that resist plaque buildup, lower resting heart rates that reduce long-term cardiovascular strain, and larger lung capacity that improves oxygen delivery during physical exertion. For ancestral populations in cool temperate and northern regions, particularly northern Europe, where nutrition was adequate from dairy farming and fishing, above average height provided competitive advantages. The larger body mass generated more metabolic heat, critical for surviving cold winters with limited heating technology, while the moderate size avoided the extreme caloric demands of very tall stature. The longer limbs provided advantages for certain physical tasks, while the enhanced cardiovascular efficiency supported sustained physical labor. Northern European populations developed above average heights over the last several thousand years, possibly driven by sexual selection for height, adequate protein from dairy and meat, and cold adaptation advantages from larger body mass. From an evolutionary perspective, above average height represents adaptation to cooler climates combined with adequate nutrition. It provides enough bulk for cold tolerance without the excessive caloric requirements of maximum height. However, above average height carries increasing cancer risk due to greater cell numbers, with approximately 20 to 30 percent elevation in overall cancer incidence compared to short individuals. Taller individuals have more cells dividing more times throughout life, creating more opportunities for cancer-causing mutations to occur. The larger body also experiences greater joint stress over a lifetime, leading to higher rates of hip and knee arthritis, and faces increased risk of atrial fibrillation and other heart rhythm problems, despite better overall cardiovascular health. Tall stature. Tall stature, ranging from 5 feet 10 inches to 6 feet for women, and 6 feet 2 inches to 6 feet 4 inches for men, affects approximately 4% of adults in developed populations, concentrated heavily in Netherlands, Montenegro, Denmark, and Nordic countries, where average heights are the world's highest. This height represents the upper range of common human variation, approaching but not reaching extremes. What makes this remarkable is maximum cardiovascular protection combined with social advantages. Tall individuals have the largest diameter blood vessels that strongly resist plaque accumulation, the lowest resting heart rates that minimize long-term cardiac wear, and substantially reduced risk of coronary heart disease and stroke compared to shorter individuals, with some studies showing 50% or greater risk reduction for those over 6 feet 2 inches. For populations in the coldest inhabited regions where heat conservation was paramount and protein from fish, meat, and dairy was abundant, tall stature provided survival advantages through superior thermoregulation. The lower surface area to volume ratio meant less heat escaping from skin surface per unit of body mass, critical for surviving Arctic and subarctic winters where hypothermia or extreme low temperature was a constant threat. The large body mass stored more energy as glycogen and fat, providing reserves during harsh winters. The height also provided advantages for fishing, hunting, and other subsistence activities. Dutch, Scandinavian, and Baltic populations developed the world's tallest average heights, driven by cold adaptation, abundant protein, excellent healthcare reducing childhood disease, and possibly strong sexual selection for height. However, tall stature carries the highest cancer risk of all height ranges, with approximately 30 to 60 percent elevation in overall cancer incidence compared to short individuals. Every 10 centimeters of additional height increases cancer risk by roughly 10 to 15 percent, a remarkably consistent relationship across populations and cancer types. The mechanism involves more cells undergoing more divisions, creating more mutation opportunities. Tall individuals also face significantly higher rates of blood clots, particularly in leg veins where blood must travel longer distances against gravity, increased atrial fibrillation from enlarged heart chambers, and joint problems including back pain, hip arthritis, and knee degeneration from supporting larger mass. Very tall stature. Very tall stature over 6 feet for women or 6 feet 4 inches for men affects approximately 1% of adults in developed populations, occurring most frequently in Netherlands and Montenegro, where heights of 6 feet 6 inches or taller are not uncommon, though most populations worldwide produce very few individuals at these extremes. This height represents the upper boundary of normal human variation, beyond which further increase becomes increasingly costly. What makes this pattern distinctive is maximum cold adaptation combined with substantial biological costs. Very tall individuals have the most extreme heat conservation capacity, losing minimal heat relative to body mass, ideal for Arctic environments combined with maximum cardiovascular protection and lowest heart disease risk across the entire height spectrum. However, these advantages came with costs that limited how tall populations could evolve. The extreme height required so much nutrition during growth that only the best-fed individuals reached maximum height, and the increased cancer risk and joint problems limited lifespan advantages. 
Blood clot risk is also substantially elevated, particularly dangerous in legs where clots can travel to lungs. Back pain and joint degeneration are nearly universal by middle age due to excessive skeletal stress. Atrial fibrillation and heart rhythm problems are common despite excellent artery health. Very tall individuals also face practical challenges from a world designed for average heights, including difficulty finding properly sized clothing, furniture, vehicles, and spaces, creating daily frustrations. From an evolutionary perspective, very tall stature represents the practical limit of beneficial large size. Beyond approximately 6 feet 6 inches, the costs of size begin to outweigh benefits even in cold climates, explaining why no population maintains average heights at these extremes and why very tall individuals remain rare even in the tallest populations. Don't just watch the world. Subscribe and understand.